Hi, today, after an unforeseen break, I'd like to tackle a little bit of a different topic. No drawing, except for the time lapse in the background. We will look at world building, the act of making up entire worlds and universes from scratch, from inspiration or from something else. Let's start at the absolute beginning. When building a new world of your own creation, you're basically playing God, making whatever you want come true in your own little world. And since we're only playing God, we're bound to make some mistakes. To make all of the points easier to understand, with the most important points in no particular order, and tackle less important shit whenever I feel like it. So let's start with number one on a randomly sorted list of things you gotta keep in mind when building your own fictional world. Which would be that your world does not have to be believable from the start. You can do the craziest shit with your creatures and people. You can shuffle gender roles and religious things together like you want. Nobody can tell you that something that you made up in your world is not true or can't be there. The only thing you have to watch out is to keep your world consistent. A good way of doing that is to build your fictional world, let's say a cult based on already existing religion. You can change everything they do, say and believe, but you can keep the structure of their religion to keep it consistent overall. That's something most movie directors and authors do. Take inspiration from real life. It will also make it easier, if you're not as experienced as them, to build something from scratch, since you can just research about it and get ideas in the process. As long as your made-up constructs in your imaginary world are consistent, they will become believable once you establish to the viewer how it works. Number two is that your world needs rules. Not rules like you shall not steal food from others, but laws of nature. At least it should have laws of nature that keep you within bounds and again create consistency. This time not in an imaginary construct of society like I took for example previously, but they create consistency about your world overall. Nobody can just fly. Everybody has to die at one point. No one can be brought back from the dead and so on. These are very simple rules that keep your imagination on a single track when thinking of new things about your world. And it also makes you more creative, since it's proven that our brains work better when they have restrictions and they have to keep that in mind. Because our stupid little brains are better at coming up with solutions around problems and restrictions rather than making something up from scratch. Rule number three is a little bit of a tricky one. It has to do with what you do know about your world and what you tell about your world. These should be two entirely different things. The easiest analogy for this is the iceberg, where all of the iceberg is what you know about your world and what you have established whatsoever. It's everything added together that you made up from your imaginary universe and the part that is visible, which is significantly less as all of humanity that likes icebergs should know, is the part that you tell your viewer throughout your art, a book or even a movie, however you want to tell it. And because of that, it makes your world intriguing. There should be parts to the viewer that he has to find out himself and other parts that become clear by going through the material you created. This principle can, for example, look something like this. My characters are on a mission and one of them gets badly injured. They try desperately to tend his wounds, but he passes away. However, they take his corpse with them to the next town, where in a big church he comes back to life. After that, all of them are scratching pennies when going to dinner and planning out the mission for tomorrow. Nowhere in this scenario do I directly tell the viewer how they brought him back to life, but by making the party poor afterwards, it makes it look like they paid a hefty price. But to who? And did it have to be a church? Is there only one in every major town? Is there one in every little village? It's a mystery that makes it intriguing. It gets you thinking. And most importantly, it gives you, as in the world builder, the opportunity to dangle a carrot in front of the viewer's face. You can hint more and more at what happened in this situation throughout the story. And if you're feeling very confident, you can give the solution completely. That could look like this. My imaginary party somehow completed the mission, and after they are back in town, some nun speaks to them about the gods having heard their prayers and stuff like that. Later in the story, I can hint again at someone being resurrected in a similar way. And once the information has settled in, and the viewer is sure that in a church they pray to God to make someone alive again and pay much money as an offering or as an entry free, I can completely give the solution, which would be that there are no gods. 
they pay a hefty price for the right to ask and pray for it. But the ones actually resurrecting the dead are people from the church that know the kind of magic needed for that. And by resurrecting people, they pay money to a cult that is actually very bad. See that this iceberg approach gives you the advantage over the viewer, making it incredibly easy to shape the world and story into something the viewer didn't expect, or maybe something that he has hoped for a long time. The iceberg method gives you the advantage over viewers, which as the creator of the world you should have. Number 4 is plot armor. If you haven't heard this term before, it's basically when a story relevant character never dies because he is story relevant, making bad guys shoot their guns at others while he is completely in their sight and making him dodge every bullet and every blow of a sword, even though others can't do that at all. Plot armor is something all of our story characters have. There is no denying that. But giving them too much is pretty bad. Especially if our characters are not made to be godlike entities. If your character is a god amongst humans, then he can dodge bullets and catch them with his teeth. But if he is a normal human, he can't. A good reference to take is the series John Wick, where the main protagonist is this gun-wielding assassin on a killing spree, dropping bad guys left and right, surviving encounters where it's him against 20 others. And the thing about it is, he is only surviving these encounters. He makes it through these encounters by almost dying about all the time. He gets cuts, bruises and he even gets shot multiple times. And that emphasizes that he is a human and not some kind of god. Sure, he also has the plot armor, but in a reasonable manner. You should always know what your characters and creatures are capable of and thus if they would be injured in some situations you put them in. Sometimes just small little injuries that don't even matter can give assurance that the main characters in a story are not some immortal beings protected by the creator. So last but definitely not least, the golden rule of making up worlds is to have fun. Obviously yes is what you probably think. And yes, that is right. When making up worlds, having fun is one of the most important things. You work differently on a project you like working on and you're sure to have better ideas and greater success with it as well. I think many people can tell apart if something was cryptically thrown together or lovingly made by the creator. Always have fun. I know some things are not as fun as others, but as long as you enjoy making your world, thinking about what else you can implement and what your story should be about, it will translate into the final product. So as a final little statement, keep it fun, keep it consistent and bear some secrets. It's just like real life. Now have a nice week and happy world building.